Man, I think there does. Uh, I think there, there needs to be a lot more integration. And some people are probably doing a heck of a lot better than me. Um, I know I'm behind at times on, on things, but, uh, you know, the catapult GPS stuff that's come out, you know, the polar heart rate stuff, you know, I'm, I go over and I'll sit down with my academic people and tell me, hey, what, what does this say? Heart rate variability? Man, we happen to have Paul Fidel at the University of Missouri. He's one of the top heart rate variability researchers in the world. So I'm like, what does this tell me? Okay, what's the difference between using this unit with the multiple lead ECGs and this heart rate monitor over here? And he'll talk about the low frequency versus high frequency and how this one catches sympathetic and predicts parasympathetic. And you know, some of these different things that I've got no clue about. And then talking about the biomechanist and uh, uh, not Dr. Guest, but somebody else. And they were telling me about the, the Hertz on the GPS. I had no clue. I thought GPS was GPS, but you know, like uh, it's gotta take like a minimum of 10 Hertz to even notice change of direction and be able to detect that. Right. Otherwise they think it's just a straight line. So then you're not actually getting a true load. It's like, you know, I gotta talk to these guys that are a hell of a lot smarter than me in those areas. I know I'm not smart enough to know that stuff. So we've gotta open those doors up. I mean, how many people are going off of something that isn't even legit, you know? Yeah, I think you, yeah, you have to, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit in my talk about uh, creating a coaching philosophy and, and using research-based training methods and scientific principles, but then you have to, you create your philosophy by how you train and your evidence-based practice from working with your athletes. Um, but, you know, just what you just said about collaborating more, that's, that's where it's going to come from. Yeah. yeah, we're going to take this research, but we might need people to help us disseminate it to figure out what we're going to do with it in the weight room and in the field and how to do how to apply it better. Um, I know that the folks at ETSU are doing a phenomenal job oh, with yeah. Dr. Stone and Sands, Meg Stone and Brad DeWeese is their head strength coach. I mean, talk about a, a, a power base there to be able to really get some people on the same page and do put it into applications. So it's just going to be more collaborating. And again, we're going to need guys like us that are in the trenches, you know, because like you were saying, is you can get this data and somebody might be able to help you tell what it is, but they're not the ones that know how to build the relationship with the athletes and know how, what it takes to get something out of the athletes. So that part's got to really not be overlooked too as, as we get this super science mode and we're going to get all this data back is you got to remember that, that uh, the coaches and the strength coaches, the guy that, or girl that builds that relationship and gets that most out of that athlete. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's been shown to me with sports psychologists, I truly believe they, they actually need to, to relay the message to the coach and then the coach delivers the message. I mean, mm. I think the Chinese weightlifters tried it as an experiment. I heard it from the, the guy that invented Chinese weightlifting uh, and he, he's, he's now since passed on, but he was like, we tried that through an interpreter, he told me this, and then it didn't work because these people that didn't know, the weightlifters had no idea who these people were. They were talking about serious things with them. And then it just didn't work. Well, then they pulled them and, and had them talk to the coaches, and the coaches relayed the message. And that was where they had success, you know. But, you know, and I'm not hindering the field of sports psychology, but the reason it hasn't advanced as well as it could have is because I don't think the, the, the application was correct. Um, you know, and then, so, so academia has to understand, look, too, just because you're in academia doesn't mean you know everything or you can manage right. all people okay, or, or fix all problems, uh, it might be the coaching. And that's what coaching, true coaching is about, is just, hey, it's, it's, more, it's not numbers, it's not scientific facts, There's, it's an art, uh, and, and it's a dealing with a relationship mm -hmm. with people. You know, it's like painting a picture versus doing a math problem. Uh, coaching is, is painting a picture that hopefully works for everybody, you and the athlete, that's, that's the big thing. And then academia, I mean, I see so many kids come out of their undergrad that you're like, okay, he's not really prepared. He, he doesn't know as much as the guy down the road that has been training 20 years. Um, and then he says, well, I don't have a job. I'll go get my master's. And I've even seen him, well, I don't have a job. I'll go get my PhD. And they still can't get a job because they don't have much experience. And so, I, I mean, there's that, there's that disconnect between true application. Do you get it in an internship? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, not in six months, you know, unless it's a really steady hands. You could, you're learn to train, I'm sure, could... Could, could teach more kids out of college uh, more than they've ever learned in a weekend at, at the fitness center, uh, you know, at the yeah. local college. In all honesty, I mean, we're just being honest here. Yeah, they you, have you know. <laughs> now, they have a great base of physiology, 
But again, they don't, they don't apply it, and they need to learn how uh, uh, advanced coaches, because coaching is an art form. Uh, again, it's taken me 17 years to get where I'm at and see the things I see. I can advance these interns pretty fast, but there's still, there's things that they miss because they don't, it just takes experience, you know? And we should, maybe there should be a leveling system for coaches, in, in all honesty, say, hey, uh, five levels, you know, this is where you're at. Hey, I'm, I'm starting out, this is what I'm worth, and maybe it would help the salary situation in this country with, with <laughs> coaching.